He's down. He's down. In this episode, we've got storms. We've got gorges. We've got bluffs. As I make my way up to this hidden, secluded hanging basin in search for that big 11. But what better way to kick off this episode than to take you back and recap on that epic encounter we had with that young 10 point stag. Now on the adventure scale, that's pretty much the limit. That was insane. That young 10 point whoppity type bull coming out right to the tops, couldn't find me last night, found me this morning, came up to have a bit of a barroom brawl or whatever was going on in his head. Maybe he was trying to pinch a few girlfriends if he thought I had some. <laughs> So not only did we have that encounter, but we're in this incredible, unbelievable, insane environment. This is a day I'm going to never, ever forget for the rest of my life. He's still standing there watching me. We're good mates now. We've got that barroom brawl kind of thing sorted out. All good mate. He's all good. Wow. So there is the slip where that stag is hanging out. And that stag's just working these faces, just zigzagging. It looks like beautiful, beautiful country in there. And this is where we came from. This is the one I really want to get eyes on. Patience has made us see that guy. Patience has made us see this guy. Patience is gonna make us see that guy. It's tempting to boost along the tops because there's a massive hanging basin that I can't wait to show you. So what I'm gonna do is drop all the way back down, try and get eyes on our boy, walk all the way back to camp, and then back up to the tops, which is gonna put an extra day on the journey. Even though I'm gonna lose a day, when I go home, I'm not gonna wonder why I didn't put the effort in to get eyes on this boy. There's also a second head basin in here. I've been keeping an eye on those tops. I'm sure there's something in there. So the weather's coming in. I decided to spend another night up here and it's closed out. Tomorrow could be our day to check him out. Let's head down tomorrow and I'll see you in the morning. A big storm came in last night. Just wind and rain and it was just amazing. Picked the campsite perfect. Just tucked behind this rock. The tent just laughed at it. Can't believe I was gifted three beautiful days in Fiordland on the tops. Let's head back to where that stag came out. Go into the bush. Make our way to that slip where that stag was roaring. The only thing is he stopped roaring last night. The bigger the other stag that was bugling with the four cows, he's actually mooched over into the other hanging basin, which is where I want to hopefully end up in the next couple of days, if the weather allows it. So with him gone, it's kept him quiet. But who knows what's gonna happen. Enough talking, let's start walking. And down, down, down we go. I certainly made the right call to get down off these tops. And I'm stoked I crossed where I did because the lower I got, the more intense the storm got. And then that stream soon turned into a raging gorge of torrent with just power and impossible crossings. I made my way down to the slip, let out a few roars, and of course that stag was tucked away and not having a bar of it. And it's fair pelting down. I've been roaring for a while, but I'm not surprised he's not answering back. I've changed audio at the moment, so if it sounds a bit different, it does, it's going off the GoPro, it's bucketing down, my remote mics are away. I'm actually going to right up on top of here. Wow! That will test you! Ha ha ha, I love it! I love it! Look at it! Sometimes it's so easy to be overwhelmed with the fear of where you are and how big the country is. But I just see the beauty of it. 
just beautiful. I know my limits. I know when to take it a bit easier. And as long as this is still on my face, I know we're good to go. <laughs> Woo! All my decision making is on what's in front of me as opposed to if I'm too cold, if I'm too wet. I just invest in the best gear you can get. So stoked on in this amazing campsite. I'm nice and dry, as dry as I can be, as dry as in that tent. That's all that matters. Come outside, do a little bit of cooking, and then I'm jumping back in. But uh, yeah, it's nice to be here and not up on those tops getting absolutely hammered. It's a beautiful day. Check that out. <laughs> and that, way up there, is where we're headed to. There's a beautiful, beautiful hanging basin and I was just hoping the weather would hold because I can't wait to check that out. I'm all packed up. Pack's heavy. It's pretty wet. As to the weight, I love it. That's what I train for. Let's start kicking off this massive hill climb because up and over that is where we're headed. The thing with Fjordland is <laughs> there is no tracks. You've got to make them as you go. Pick a route, research it, and hope you find a whoppity trail. <laughs> One thing that's always going to test you is you always come across these massive bluffs. Even when on the map it looks like it's gentle, it never is. I've just got to negotiate. Looks like there might be a bit of a track. A whoppity track that cuts up on top of it. I'm getting there one step at a time. <laughs> wow. It's been hard work. This whole site is just bluffs. Again, it's going to be so hard to see how steep it is, but it's just <laughs> who knows how far up that goes. So I'm just concentrating on cutting those bluffs and making sure I'm sitting around that 750 to 780. That's the bench that I think is just going to get me around to where I need to get to safely. Which should be just around this corner. So I'll just be a bit careful here. Clamber up there. I am where I want to be now. Oh, and what a contrast. Check this out just flattens off and we just gotta make our way there's another monster bluff up here we just gotta cut below it and then we should be the start of the hanging head basin I might mark this on my GPS above bluff caution <laughs> That was gnarly. I made it. Whoa, what an effort. Are you ready for the big reveal of where we are? It's unbelievable. Check this out. The camp is way down the bottom of that. Hence why it was a big effort to get here. <laughs> oh, look at that. Don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a rainbow. Right in that big hanging basin lake. <laughs> there's gold here. There is gold in these parts. Look at the tops. I just can't believe it. That big 11. With the four cows, keeps showing itself here, 
and along these tops but I haven't seen them yet from here just from where we were way back a few days ago where we were camped this is where he was hanging out and I'm pretty sure this is where he ended up I must admit coming up through that horrible big bluffy bit I was just stoked I wasn't dragging anybody else up there with me I had to endure by myself and I was happy with that <laughs> I'm going to set up the tent, put on some more warm clothes, and then just glass these faces. Nothing came out yet, but we've still got a day and a half to try and find a big, mature stag. Whether we find something big or not, we'll know more tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. You know it's a cold night when your boots freeze on the inside of the tent. Definitely not the warmest of mornings, <laughs> but look at this day. Sun's gonna hit us soon. I'm looking forward to that. I did hear one bugling last night up in here, but he was right on the midnight train. Right on midnight, he just started up. Wasn't going crazy, just a few bellows now and then, and then, uh, then stopped. Maybe he was screaming out to his mates how cold he was, I'm not sure. I've been glassing these faces. I haven't seen anything out on them yet, which is surprising. I've got something bugling right by camp. I haven't even had time to put my boots on. <laughs> He's just up in here. He's just up in here somewhere. And it sounds like he's coming. He's down. I just didn't have time. Yeah, he's down. I didn't have time at all to set up the camera, the big camera. He was just cranking. He was coming too fast from way up the top there. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely down from way up the top there, screaming down came all the way. I still didn't have a lot of time to assess him, but he was moving, sort of, he was moving like he was an old boy, just because he was just moving a bit in cumbersome. Everything was a bit of an effort, as opposed to a younger one, which is just more neck up and just more springy. He was big, he was long, <laughs> he's down. And check this out. Still, haven't got my boots on. Camp is literally right there. <laughs> Hopefully he's not too young. I hope, I hope I haven't made the wrong decision. But then saying that, if I have, if he's too young, then I'm happy to live with that because I pulled the trigger, that was on me. I couldn't have scripted this whole trip better than I have on this trip. On the last, last, last day, last full day. See the biggest stag that comes out, screams down from the top, no time to set up on the lens. And he just comes out. I'll go get my boots on. Let's go see what we've got. So there's my tent, my campsite. 
and he's just tucked in here. I can see him with my naked eye, but he's 117 yards from camp. Enough talking. Let's get my boots on. Let's go have a look at him. Let's see what we've got. There he is. And literally, as you're seeing him for the first time, I'm seeing him for the first time. Let's go have a look. As I walk up to this beautiful, majestic, whoppity type bull, I do it with mixed emotions. The absolute excitement and adrenaline of everything coming to this one point. Seeing this beautiful bull miles away at the beginning of the trip. Oh. Seeing him on the silhouette of this big, majestic ridge. That sounded good. And then spending days to cut back his tracks up bluffs into a beautiful hanging basin just to get a better beat on him knowing that that's where he's moved to. The sense of what gives me the right to actually take the life of this animal and I've got to be honest he is more than likely probably about two even three years out of his full potential of just getting that absolute biggest rack the biggest maturity that he was going to reach in this area. I've got to admit the success for me is not the pulling of the trigger, although that lure of a big stag around the corner does get me up the bluffs, in through the swampy areas, up and down where I need to go. It's more the country, it's the views that we've seen. It's the weather that's held for us to get to the tops and just be blown away with views like this. Sure, pair of antlers, hard up against the tent, it's always a bonus, but the 100 kilos of meat I'm bringing home to the family, they're going to be happy. As the sun goes down, so does end this trip of 2023, period two, still water. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining me on this incredible adventure. I'll see you again soon.